Thank you for staying with us on this special edition of UMTV's News Vision, celebrating the Diamond Jubilee of the Everglades National Park. Hundreds of animal and plant species that live here in the Everglades are considered endangered, threatened, or commercially exploited. Billy Brightman joins us now with more. Billy? The Everglades is one of the most critical ecosystems in the world, with a wide range of flora, fauna, and wildlife. Currently, more than 60 animals, like the alligators that live in this water here, and over 160 native seed-bearing plants are on the list of endangered or threatened species. The Florida Everglades is home to more than 1,500 animal and plant species. These include more than 360 species of birds, 300 species of both fresh and saltwater fish, some 50 reptile species, 40 mammal species, and about 750 native seed-bearing plants. And the Everglades is the only place in the United States where you can see some of these species in the wild. For example, the Everglades mink, the Florida panther, and the American crocodile. The Everglades is also the most important tropical wading bird breeding ground in North America. The park provides critical foraging and breeding habitat for 16 species of wading birds such as egrets, herons, and ibises. Everglades National Park was the first national park that was officially protected for biodiversity and not just scenery. But over the past century, the ecosystem has lost more than 90% of its wading bird population and dozens of Everglades species are considered endangered and threatened. The Everglades has been protected for so long uh, and it, during, during that entire time, it has been the safest harbor for some of the most endangered species that we have, not only in Florida, but in North America. Some of the animals on the endangered species list are the Florida panther, which is the largest and most endangered mammal in North America, American alligator and American crocodile, manatee, snail kite, wood stork, various turtles and tortoises, and Florida bonneted bat. And some of the plants on the endangered list are Florida prairie clover, Florida bristol fern, Everglades bully, and Cape sable throwwort. One of the main threats to the Everglades species is urbanization and agricultural development, which has resulted in serious habitat loss, something that authorities are trying to undo. The work that we do uh, as stewards of these places, particularly when it comes to endangered species, is mostly habitat work. Our philosophy is that when you create a good habitat, whether marine or terrestrial, it, all the species, not, not just the ones that are threatened and endangered, are going to have the best chance at survival. Invasive species are another serious threat to the native flora and fauna of the Everglades. About 1.7 million acres of the Everglades have been invaded by non-native plants. One of the biggest threats is an Australian swamp tree called Melaleuca, it was planted in the Everglades in 1905, when efforts to drain the ecosystem were in full swing. Melaleuca literally sucks the wet out of wetlands. Now there are tens of thousands of acres of Melaleuca in the Everglades, and they're this disastrous invasive species. We're spending tens of millions of dollars to try to get rid of it, and it just doesn't like to die. So how do we solve this problem? It all goes back to restoration efforts we're going to continue investing our resources so that if we cannot ever eradicate these things, we cannot throw in the towel. We need to continue applying pressure just so that we can give the native environment the best chance possible to do well by itself. And one of the most endangered species, not just in the Everglades, but in the world, is the Florida panther. Ryan Marshall has been trying to track down some panthers for weeks. Ryan, why is it so hard? Billy, this is a sign that visitors to the Everglades will see on the roads inside the park. It warns them to beware of crossing panthers, but it would actually be a miracle if anyone were to see a panther in the wild, because currently there are about only 200 of them left. Hidden in the Everglades and Big Cypress National Preserve is the remaining population of Florida's big cat. The Florida panther once roamed across the entire southeastern United States, but the panther's habitat has been destroyed through urban development and is now only a small fraction located in southern Florida. 
and over the last couple hundred years, the apex predator's population decreased to around 20 individuals left in the wild in the 1970s. The small population and limited gene pool forced biologists and conservationists to take some extreme measures to ensure the species' survival. And we made the very difficult decision to bring in six female Texas cougars. We released them in the wild. We let them breed one time and then we removed them. And while these efforts have helped raise the population to around 200 wild Florida panthers, the species is still considered one of the most endangered mammals in North America. They're so saturated in the existing preserved lands now and they've got pressures coming, like I said, from development on all sides. They need to move northward and they need to be able to move northward safely into other areas, other large forest tracts and preserves. As development in Florida has boomed over the last 50 years, the urban sprawl has led to small side roads being built through Florida Panther territory. And as a result, road collisions are the number one cause of death for Florida's big cat. It's basically the areas around Naples continuing to expand eastward. And as these small roads that used to not get much traffic, when they build more and more housing developments, all of a sudden they have a lot of traffic on them. And you have panthers that are growing in numbers and they're moving that way too. And those areas where those roads overlap, they have no protections to keep panthers from running out onto the road like I-75 does. For decades, the Florida panther breeding range has been limited to south of the Caloosahatchee River, leading to saturated territories. But in 2020, the first female panther and her kittens were seen north of the river. Biologists and conservationists have proposed a plan to allow more panthers and other endangered wildlife to safely move north of the river through the use of the Florida Wildlife Corridor a web of private and public connected lands across the state that secures access for roaming wildlife. That corridor is what enables animals to, to, to travel throughout the state uninterrupted. And we're working with all kinds of people, Florida ranchers, cattle ranchers, you know, agricultural people to maintain that corridor. People think about the ranchers and the agricultural people as kind of like the enemies of conservation. In reality, they're not. They're providing huge conservation easements that allow these animals from the Florida panther to deer to bear to be able to move up and down the state. And many of these ranchers are strong supporters of the corridor and the protection of Florida's wildlife. It's not all about the panther. It's about where the panther lived. If we save the panther, we have to save his habitat. But some ranchers believe they are not being paid enough compensation in cases where panthers prey on cattle and other livestock. We can't just save the panther and forget all the people that are going to sustain that food supply for that panther. The Florida Wildlife Corridor Act was signed in 2021 and an expansion to the bill has been approved in 2023. And biologists and conservationists hope the corridor might be the solution in saving the Florida panthers. If we can get these ranchers to understand, we get these panthers to start migrating north of Caloosahatchee and that panther range extends, I think the panthers have a, have a, a, positive, a positive future here in Florida. For UMTV, I'm Ryan Marshall. Besides hundreds of native species who live in the Everglades, the park is also home to many invasive species, including plants such as Brazilian pepper and Australian pine, and animals such as tegu lizards, wild boars, and lionfish, among others. They all pose a significant threat to the ecosystem by taking over it and driving native species out of existence. And without a doubt, the worst invasive animal in the Everglades is the Burmese python. Jaira Rivero joins us now with more. Jaira? Guys, the Burmese python is indeed the biggest threat to the native species here in the Everglades. Nobody knows how many of these constrictive snakes live in the area, but estimates say it's in the hundreds of thousands. The pythons can grow very large, some up to 20 feet, and they don't have any natural predators. So it is up to humans to try and rid the Everglades of these invasive snakes. The, the python is a very charismatic, it is a beautiful animal, but it doesn't belong here. The Burmese python is native to parts of Asia and it was introduced to Florida in the late 1980s when people started importing exotic pets. But when the pet snakes grew too big for their owners, many were dumped into the Everglades. People did not understand that when a, an exotic animal a, gets loose in a natural environment, it could in fact uh, survive. And if it survives and then it thrives, then it could take over the landscape and displace the, the natural uh, flora and fauna that exists. With no natural predators, the snakes are multiplying and eating everything they can. 
the National Academies of, Academy of Science uh, basically indicted the Python for being responsible for the collapse of the small mammal population. These aren't captive bred snakes that are eating once a month or once every two months. They'll eat any chance they can get. Nobody knows exactly how many Burmese pythons live in the Everglades, but some estimates put their numbers as high as half a million. Each female snake can lay up to 100 eggs every year, and these snakes can live an average of 20 years. It's a problem that has been uh, testing us now for several decades, and it's also a problem that has been very, very difficult to, to get our arms around. The state of Florida has implemented several different initiatives to rid the Everglades of Burmese pythons, one of those is a competition called the Annual Python Challenge, which brings hunters from all over the United States to the Everglades to find and catch as many of these snakes as possible. But while the competition certainly raises awareness for the issue, the participants manage to catch just a few dozen snakes at a time. So officials are also calling in on the public to help with the python eradication by using an app called I've Got One. It allows you to take a picture, mark the location with a GPS, just dropping a pin, and letting us know where you remove the snake from. The most successful initiative to catch Burmese pythons to date is the hiring of 100 contractors whose sole job is to hunt and kill the snakes. Yeah, so we get paid um, minimum wage and then we get paid per snake. So the first four feet of the snake is $50 and then every additional foot after that is 25. And uh, we're basically hunting the hunters. We're, we're, going, out after, uh, we're going after them when they're moving they're looking for food and we're looking for them. Since the contractor program began in 2017, hunters like Ryan and Donna have removed about 10,000 pythons from the Everglades. But while that might sound promising, the consensus is that the Everglades would never be completely free of Burmese pythons. My scientists are telling me that uh, they're not feeling all that optimistic. But that doesn't mean giving up on getting rid of the most invasive species in the Florida Everglades. We're not going to throw in the towel and we're going to continue investing in science. We're going to continue putting the pressure on the species uh, by collecting it when we can and, 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 and partnering with uh, other agencies, other entities, and even uh, Floridians. For UMTV, I'm Jay Rivero.